me, not even for the praise team, but for God right now. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's give God our best praise today for this opportunity to be in God's house. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with all of you today uh, on the Lord's Sabbath. How many of you are happy to be in the building today? Come on, say amen. Just happy to be here today. Praise God, praise God. I'm glad to be with you as well here in South Florida with my boy Shay and the Southeastern Conference. And check this out. I'm not going to waste your time today um, because the praise team just messed me up. Come on, say amen, somebody. And uh, I'm ready to get into God's word. Would you stand to your feet with me right now? Come on, stand with me. Stand, stand, stand. And I want you to take out your Bibles, and I want you to turn to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. And I want you to look at verses 1 through 3, and then 15 through 17. Daniel chapter 6. And I need you to look at verses 1 through 3 and 15 through 16. Look at what the word of the Lord says to you today. The word says, It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps over the kingdom and to be in charge of the whole kingdom and over them three commissioners of whom Daniel was one so that these satraps would be accountable to them and the king would not suffer loss. Then Daniel began distinguishing himself among the commissioners and the satraps because he possessed an excellent or extraordinary spirit. And the king intended to appoint him over the entire kingdom. Verse 15, then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, remember your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. And so the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. With your prayers and God's help today, I just want to speak to you from the subject, I'm still here. I'm still here. Come on, pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. I pray that you would hide me behind the cross right now and use me as you see fit. No one has come here today to hear Pastor Coxum. They have come to hear your voice. And so I pray for every young person, every young adult, every senior, every adult who is in the building today, that everybody would receive a word from you. And when it's all said and done, may we be able to say it was good for us to be in the house of the Lord. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm still here. I, I, I really like the story of Daniel because the story of Daniel is a story of faithfulness. But it's not just the story of faithfulness of a moment, it's the story of faithfulness over a lifetime, which I actually believe is what God wants for every single one of us. God doesn't want us to just be faithful in the two hours that we are at church. Come on, say amen, somebody. God doesn't just want us to be faithful when it's convenient and the lights are on and the cameras are on us, but God wants us to be faithful to him all the time as he will always be faithful to us. And here's the bottom line of the situation today. I, I just believe that God wants us to live a life by which only we can call on God, but not only us calling on God, but God can call on us. Y'all miss what I just said today. I believe God wants us to live a life whereby we can call on him, and that is our right as believers to be able to call on God at a moment's notice. But I also believe God wants us to live a life that is so worthy of him that, that, that God is able to call on us. And the question we all have to ask ourselves today is, can God call on you? 
Can God reach down into his cosmic file cabinet when there is a need and pull out your name? I wish I had help in here today. Uh, is it, do we believe today that God can scroll down his list of contacts and, and pull out your name and call upon you when he needs a testimony of his greatness in your life? I wonder today, before I get too far, has God done anything for anybody in the building today? Has God made a way in your life at all? And if God purposed to push you to the front and put a mic in your hand, could you tell of the goodness of God? The question never is, can we call on God? The question is, can God call on you? Oh, Father, help me today. Uh, it, it, Daniel's story begins when he and his friends, the three Hebrew boys, they, they are about 17 years old, and they are kidnapped from his homeland, and they're brought into the king's service in Babylon. The king puts food before them at the king's table, but they know that they are not supposed to eat it, so they refuse the food under penalty of death. And the Bible says just because that simple act of obedience, God blesses them. We don't even have time to talk about what happens in Daniel chapter 3, where, where God keeps the Hebrew boys in the midst of a fiery furnace. But we're fast forwarding now to Daniel chapter 6, where we are today. And the Bible says, man, this is so good, that there is a new king and there is a new kingdom on the scene. And Daniel is actually now about 80 years old. 60 years have passed, and 60 years Daniel has been faithful. And what the Bible tells us is simply this, is that King Darius, who is the king of Medo-Persia, decides to promote and appoint Daniel to the highest position in the entire kingdom. In fact, y'all stay with me for a moment, in, in, in fact, he is over other rulers even though he is a foreigner. He's not from the place. He does not subscribe to the culture. He does not dress the way that they dress, probably barely speaks the language, but the Bible says he is able to ascend the ranks of a foreign political government to the highest ranking office in the land. And it's right here in the text where God calls Daniel's number. God calls on Daniel to be a testimony of faithfulness to us right here in South Florida. And, and there are some lessons, thank you God, uh, that we can learn from Daniel chapter 6 and Daniel's life that I believe are going to help us today. And here is where I get my help. Here's lesson um, number one. I just want somebody today to know that character counts. Whew, Father, help me today. <laughs> let, me, let me say that again for somebody in the back. Um, character counts. It's interesting that Daniel is brought to the highest place in the land because Daniel does not have the degrees. <laughs> he did not attend the Persian schools. He has none of the certifications or the qualifications or the credentials. He doesn't have the right pedigree or the DNA. But the Bible says that the king appoints him and promotes him in such a way that he is the highest ranking person in the land. As a matter of fact, what the Bible says is the only thing that Daniel has to his credit, watch this, is an excellent spirit. Father, help me today. His spirit is right. A character that is formed after having a deep and meaningful relationship with God. Daniel is a man of character. And see, it says because of character that the king appoints him to this high position. In other words, he's favored by the king. All right. Um, it's funny, man. My wife gets jealous now of my four-year-old daughter. Can you believe it? Um, because, you know, before she came along, I would take my wife on these shopping sprees to Target. God, y'all, wake up today. Wake up, everybody. I, I would take my wife and buy her stuff just randomly. She loves nothing but cakes. We're this place that all they sell is bunt cakes, and she likes the white chocolate raspberry. You, you, somebody knows what I'm talking about. And I would get that for her, like, all the time. But ever since Layla, my four-year-old daughter, came on the scene, like, I ain't saying my wife has been pushed to the back at all, but all I'm saying is I cannot go into a store and not buy my daughter something. Are y'all with me today? She has favor. Come on, say amen. I didn't say favoritism, but she's got favor. I don't know what it is. It's just her smile and her bubbly personality and how cute she is and how good of a, a little girl she is. She is favored by me simply because she is my child. Wake up, church. I need you to understand today that just because you are a believer, 
and a child of God, you are favored by God. See, I know nobody wants to say amen on this because somebody thinks that I'm preaching a prosperity message, but I'm really not. I'm talking about the favor of God, and ultimately, favor is not fair. There are some things that God will do for you he won't do for anybody else. There are doors that God will open for you that he will not open for anybody else. Oh, I'm in the book. The Bible says he will open doors that no man can shut, and he will shut doors that no man can open. The Bible says if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he, oh God, he will give us the desire of our heart. Uh, yeah, in fact, God even says of his people, he says, man, I have written your names upon the palms of my hands. God says you have favor on your life. And I need somebody to understand today that if you will, if you will give yourself to God, if you will make it your purpose to have good character, God will do things for you he might not do for anybody else. By the way, we're not talking about gifts. We're talking about character. Because see, y'all, don't miss this today. Gifts will take you where character cannot keep you. God, help me today. Gifts will get you the corner office. But when they leave money out to test you and you take it, oh, Lord, help me today, your character won't be able to keep you there. The best thing for you to do is to have character and let God raise you up. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. Now, by all means, get the degrees. By all means, have the qualifications. By all means, get, have the nice GPA. By all means, do things and have fun and, and be successful in life. But in all you're getting, get character as well. Be a good person at the end of the day. Come on, say amen, somebody. Be the same person you are in the light as you are in the dark. Are you with me today? Be the same type of person everywhere you go, and God will bless you. God will bless you in such a way. You know, okay, let me put it this way. I feel like God wants you to live in such a way that people have to wonder how you got what you got. I feel like God wants you to live in such a way that when people watch you and doors just swing open for you and jobs come your way, come on, say amen, somebody, and money falls into your bank account. I believe God wants you to live in such a way that people are scratching their head and wondering, how in the world are you doing better than me when I got this, that, and the third, and you don't have any of that? And I need you to understand that for Daniel, the door swings open because of the favor of the king. Oh, Lord. (laughs) He experiences the goodness of God in his life. And I want you to know today, man, that sometimes, no, not sometimes, all the time, God blesses us so that we can give a testimony of the goodness of God. And I'm going to be real with you today. I'm sorry. I'm just a real pastor. Like, it's so many times, man, people come to me and, and, and they'll be like, um, yo, pastor, pray for me. And they'll be like, um, pray that I get a job. And we pray for them. We anoint them with oil. We fast. We bring it up at the prayer meeting and we pray for them. We bring them down the aisle and lay hands on them. And then they go out there. They get the job that they're praying for and we never see them again. Oh, Father, help me today. (laughs) I have so many people, right, who come to me and ask for prayer because they went to the doctor and the doctor saw something on the scan. We come to the church and we pray and we anoint them with oil. They go back to the doctor and the doctor can't find anything, but they're not willing to give a testimony of the goodness of God. I'm getting ahead of myself. I believe that God blesses us in order to bless other people so that we can stand and proclaim. Y'all don't hear me today the goodness of God in our lives. Watch this. Daniel gets stuff that he's not supposed to get. He's where he's not supposed to be. He has a position that he has not earned according to the secular understanding of earning. He does not have the degrees. He he does not have the qualifications. He does not have the credentials. And as you can imagine, it makes the other political leaders in the kingdom very much jealous of him. So the Bible says here is what they do. They launch an investigation (laughs) to try to figure out how they could trap Daniel and put him in jail. Now, y'all listen to me. Please, don't, don't, don't miss this today. They hire private investigators <laughs> to look through all of his text messages. Some of you done right there. <laughs> oh, how they help me today. They hire people to hack into all of his accounts. But check this out. The Bible says they don't find anything. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. Y'all going to stay here for a minute. They look 
at every part of his life. These are people with means and people with resources, and they can't find anything wrong with Daniel. Not so much as an inappropriate Snapchat. Not so much as a, as, a, as a taboo message in his phone. Nothing. He does not move decimal points around. He does not cheat on his taxes. He's truthful on his time clock. Daniel has a level of integrity that they have never seen before. They look into his life. And they find nothing. Now, I'm going to be real with y'all today. I just got to be real, man. Like, I ain't going to lie shit. Like, man, I, I've been a pastor for over 12 years, but I ain't going to lie to you, man. Like, I ain't did nothing too crazy. But if you look in my life hard enough, y'all ain't going to be real. Y'all going to leave me up here by myself. It's all right. I'm going to be real. All have sinned and fallen short. Come on, say amen, somebody, of the glory of God. But if you look in my life hard enough, you're probably going to find something. The Bible says they can't find anything wrong with Daniel because he's a man of such extraordinary character and of an excellent spirit. So the Bible says they revert to plan B. They say, you know what, if we can't find anything illegal, then we'll have to find something that he consistently does and make that thing illegal. All right. All right, all right. First thing is character counts. Here's number two. Worship is a weapon. Whew. Father, help me today. They look at his life and they see that the only thing that your boy um, really does consistently, he, he's not at the bar, he, he's not smoking and drinking, he's not going to the club, he, he's not doing nothing crazy at all. They say the only thing that we can get him on, the thing that we see him doing more than anything else is worshiping God. <laughs> they, they, they notice that Daniel worships like all day, every day, and he prays three times a day. They watch Daniel for what seems like weeks and months, and what they find out is, is that the only thing that Daniel has with him on his hip all the time is worship. Y'all missing what I'm saying. But worship is a weapon. Oh, Lord, help me today. So they decide, watch this, to outlaw worship. Now, I got to ask y'all a question today. Please be real with me. You know, it's, it's kind of funny because, like, man... If worship were made illegal, many of us would still be walking around free. <laughs> Y'all don't hear the preacher today. <laughs> Nobody wants to stand when praise and worship is going on. We look like zombies. Come on, say amen. I'm going to be real today. Nobody wants to raise their hand anymore. Nobody wants to say amen and thank God for all the stuff that God has done for you. God was with you every day this week. You could have died last night in your bed, but God put breath in your body and woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Where y'all at today? They, they, they outlaw worship. And I got to be honest with you, I've never been arrested. I've never been to jail. As far as I know, I haven't done nothing illegal as far as I know. But the one thing I'm willing to be made guilty of is worship. Are y'all hearing the preacher today? I, I, I want to be guilty of worship. And it's so funny. We will shout when the Dolphins win a game. We will shout at a graduation. We will celebrate at our party. We will act crazy fools given the situation and the circumstance. But when we come into the house of the Lord, we say nothing. It's funny, man. You know, I went to my first um, football game a couple years ago. I tell this story all the time. And my, my favorite team is the Carolina Panthers. Don't say anything. We're doing horrible. Don't say a word. Come on, say amen. And I remember going, it was me, my dad, my brother-in-law, and my brother. We had pretty good seats. And it was a pretty important game because the game would determine if they would go to the playoffs or not. And I remember my favorite player, Cam Newton. I got the jersey at home. Cam Newton threw a pass into the end zone, right into the corner in the very last seconds of the game. The boy caught the ball. Come on, say amen, somebody. And you can believe that the stadium erupted. 
Okay, all right, all right, all right. Well, well, stay with me, stay with me here. See, when you go to a basketball game, it's probably about eight to 10,000 people. When you go to a football game, it's more like 80,000 people. And I need you to understand that when he caught that pass, everybody in the stadium applauded and cheered. In fact, the person that I was sitting next to that I did not know stood up and gave me a hug. He actually wasted his beer on me. But check this out. I did not care. And I didn't care because we were all there celebrating the same thing in our stadium. And yet, we come into the stadium of God. <laughs> oh. And he's been throwing touchdowns all week. Oh, Lord, help me today. God has been getting first downs all week, and yet we say nothing. We think it's better to just be silent in the house of the Lord when God has made ways out of no way, protected you, taken care of you, provided for you. I come into the house of the Lord. Watch this. Oh, God. I come into the house of God because I know that worship is a weapon. <laughs> come on, say amen, somebody. That means when I come into the house of God, I'm not coming to play no games. Come on, say amen. When I come into the house of the Lord, I'm coming to worship. In fact, even if the preacher is not good, quote, unquote, because I know how y'all are, y'all going to be holding up signs as soon as I'm done. Nine, ten. I know the truth. Come on, say amen. I've been doing this quite a long while. But at the end of the day, even if the preacher is quote unquote not hitting the way I want him to hit, I shout off the stuff I thought he should have said. Y'all missed what I just said today. I come into the house not for people. I did not come for a fashion show. I did not come to make other people comfortable. I have come to praise God from whom all blessings flow. I need an extra deposit of help and healing so I can get through the rest of the week. I need to load up my gun. Because worship is a weapon. Oh, Father, help me today. They recognize that Daniel, he doesn't rely on his big government check. His faith is not in his 401k. Come on, say amen, somebody. His faith is not in his education. They recognize very quickly that the main thing that Daniel cares about is God and worshiping him continually. And the Bible says in order to trap him, they outlaw worship. But Daniel continues to pray three times a day. Daniel says, watch this. <laughs> I don't care what the decree says. When I think about the goodness of God and all he's done for me, when I think about the student loans that have been paid, come on, say amen, somebody. When I think about him keeping my family together, when I think about him saving me on the dangerous highways and byways, I don't care what the decree says. I'm coming in here to give God the glory that is due his name. I will not let the rocks cry out for me. Oh, Father. Daniel says, I don't care. I love God too much not to worship him. And the Bible says, he says, forget the decree, forget the law. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to give God the glory that is due his name. I'm sorry, y'all. I feel the spirit pushing me to say this today, so I got to be real with y'all. Let's change the atmosphere a little bit when we come into the house of God. When people stand up in the back and they're praising God and they're shouting. Come on, say amen, somebody. And they're clapping their hands. We don't need people looking around and saying, it don't take all that. Come on, say amen. We need somebody to be in the house and praise with them to lift God up over here. As somebody lifts God up over here, we have taught our children ah, to be silent in the house of the Lord when God has done good things for them but we teach them to be loud out there y'all not ready for me today <laughs> I, I need you to understand I, I want you to understand that worship is a weapon and watch this oh God if we teach young people listen to me I got to talk to the parents for a minute if we teach our children to lose control in here they will gain control out there. Oh, y'all missed what I just said. <laughs> 
but we teach them to hold control in here. So when they get out there, they go crazy when they get to Oakwood. It's okay, you ain't got to invite me back. I know I'm telling the truth today. Come on, say amen. I know. I need you to hear me today that worship is a weapon, and worship is the most powerful weapon in your arsenal. Because here's the bottom line. When the money runs out, God will be there. When the friends are no longer around, God will always be there. You can call him morning, noon, or at night. You can call God 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. His phone is always on. And when we talk to God, he is not twiddling his thumbs, trying to figure out what to do. In fact, the Bible says, before you call, God has already answered. And listen to me, young people, I had to learn this along the way because sometimes we don't see it when we're young. But when you get older and you got to start paying bills, and sometimes the month outruns the money. Anybody know what I'm talking about in the house of God today? It's all right. When you're not born into a family with a silver spoon, when you recognize that you got to pay for child care and you got to pay for student loan debt and you got health problems and issues, you learn very quickly that the only thing you can rely on is God. I want you to learn today that worship is a weapon. Okay, okay, I got to move. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Man, first of all, I, I, I need you to know that character counts. Somebody say character counts. I need you to know that, that worship is a weapon. Say worship is a weapon. But I also need you to live out loud. Mm. What you talking about, preacher? Now, um, the text says that Daniel continues to pray three times a day. But there's something I left out intentionally. The Bible says <laughs> he would go into his nice government mansion at the top of the hill. He would um, go up into his upstairs bedroom. And the Bible says not only would he pray, he would pray with the window open. Now, <laughs> when I first read this text, Pastor, I, 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 I had a problem with Daniel. I'm like, Daniel, like, bro, come on now. <laughs> you know it's illegal. Like, you can still serve God, just, just close the window. <laughs> Doesn't the Bible say get into your prayer closet? Come on, say amen, somebody. And shut the door and just pray by yourself. You can save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble if you just don't open the window. And at first, I was like, why, Daniel? But I learned in the text that it was Daniel's custom. And I imagine... That if me or anybody else were in this situation, we would be tempted, please hear me today, to hide our faith. Oh, God. But the one area, please hear me, the one area where the window has to stay open oh, is when we are in relationship with God. I know it's, it's cute and it's comfortable and it's in vogue now uh, to, to move in silence. But when it comes to our relationship with God, we are never to hide our faith. We're supposed to worship with the window open. Y'all miss what I just said. Wake up, church. Wake up. I, I need you to know that I don't know about you, but I want to live my love for God out loud. It's funny because um, we have all these ways of communicating to the world our passions and the things we love. <laughs> we got T-shirts with, with, with brands on them. We wear jerseys with people's names on them. And we pay all of this kind of money for people we will probably never meet. And even if they meet us, they really won't care. It kills me the fight that we have sometimes in our community when Jordans are released and people get killed for shoes. Y'all don't hear me today. <laughs> it, it's crazy to me how, how we have all of these passions for other things in the world, these things that cannot save us and do not benefit us, uh, but, but, but sometimes we can be silent about God. And see, I want you to understand this. Had Daniel gone into his room and closed the window, he would have begun to dissolve his resolve for worshiping God. It's what we like to call creeping compromises. 
If we start to close the window a little bit now, pretty soon we'll be afraid to bow our heads in the restaurant and thank God for the food that is on our plate. If we begin to close the window now, then that means that anybody can come into our life, especially if they're fine. Father, help the preacher today. <laughs> especially if they look good. They can come right in, bypass all of our defenses, and sit in God's seat and become our God. So if he says, we're not going to church today, okay, we're not going to church. Y'all going to get this tomorrow. Wake up, church. Wake up. It's called creeping compromises. But, but, but Daniel says, I, I, I know better. I know what God has done, and I'm not going to adjust my boundaries for anybody. I know who I am, and I know who I serve. If they don't like me, so what? God loves me, and he thought I was to die for. Y'all miss what I just said. <laughs> I wish we could have some more young people in the world today. I, I know you're in the building today because I, I know you're good kids and you love God. I wish we had some more people who were just willing to say no. Who were willing to set boundaries. Come on, say amen. That you can only come in so far, but you cannot mess with my relationship with God. That's where I draw the line. Daniel says, I'm not going to close the window. I'm not going to um, adjust my boundaries for anybody. I'm going to leave the window open. I, need to hear, I want you to hear this today, too, because Daniel, as I said before, he's no longer 16 and 17 years old. In fact, he's an old man. And you may be wondering to yourself, like, Pastor, why are you preaching about an old man today at Youth Federation? I want you to hear this today. Because if, if, if anybody could have asked for a day off from being faithful, it's Daniel. He could have said, God, the decree to worship the king is only 30 days. Can I have 30 days off from praying? Can I have 30 days off from pathfindering? Can I have 30 days off of living right? Can I just have 30 days off, God, to do what I want to do? If anybody had a reason to turn up, it's Daniel. Y'all going to wake up today. Um, it's funny, man, because we're in life right now and we're living and we're doing all this kind of stuff. And, 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 and you know, it's like, man, when, 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 uh, when stuff goes wrong in our life, we tend to think that now we deserve to turn up. Father, come on, say amen, somebody. We feel like we deserve to live our life our way. But Daniel says, God, I want to live for you every day of my life because I know where my help comes from. Daniel lives his life out loud. Now, I'm almost done, but I want you to hear this, and we're going to get out your way today. Daniel's enemies now have him right where they want him, and they report him to the king. The Bible says they see him at his house, upstairs, in his bedroom, at the window where everybody can see. They see Daniel praying and praying out loud and talking to his God. They snap pictures of him and get video evidence, and then they run to the king and say, See, king, we told you there are people out there who are worshiping other gods but you. You have to do what you said you were going to do. But remember, Daniel has favor with the king. And so the king is like, yo, I don't want to put Daniel in the lion's den because Daniel is my friend. But the Medes and the Persians, they have this crazy law where it's like once a law has been set, it cannot be changed even by the king. So the Bible says that they grab Daniel. Ah, they take him to the lion's den and they throw him in. Verse 17 of Daniel 6, watch this. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Now, you know, there's something missing from the text today. Out of all of these verses so far, we have heard no word from Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, God. Daniel is silent. We don't hear him in anguish. 
we don't hear him communicating his fear. We don't hear Daniel saying, oh, it's all over for me now. I have had a good run. But in fact, Daniel says nothing. And what the text is implying is, is that Daniel trusts God with his life. What he's saying is, I've been faithful to God, and I know God will be faithful to me. Check this out, y'all. I got a question today. What if God was only as faithful to you as you were as faithful to him? What if God only gave you the amount of time you gave him? What if God played tit for tat? But your boy Daniel is in such a situation that he knows that he has, he has character that counts. He has worship as his weapon. He has lived his life out loud, and he is assured beyond the shadow of a doubt, if I ever find myself in a lion's den, I know God is going to show up. I want to tell y'all something today. Young people, please listen to me today. I know that you're young right now, and you're in your parents' homes, and I'm not saying you don't go through troubles because young people go through troubles too. Come on, say amen, somebody. And you got your own problems and your own situations. But I want you to know today, I want you to know that as you get older, the more lions you will face. The more problems you will encounter. Life gets more complicated the moment you get a job and have to start paying bills. Life gets more complicated when you get married and you and your husband or your wife don't get along. Life gets more complicated when you have kids. Are you with me? Life gets more complicated the older you get and your health may be failing. Life gets more complicated. And the Bible says we will face more lions. As a matter of fact, it says the devil is as a roaring lion running about seeking whom he may devour. And I want you to understand today the reason I'm preaching about an 80-year-old man is because you can't wait till you get my age or older to start living for God. I really wish you would start now. I really wish you would start right now living out loud, even at your middle school. I wish you would not be afraid to bow your head in the lunchroom. And thank God for the food that is on your table. I wish you would not be afraid to tell people the God that you serve. I wish you would not be afraid to tell somebody no. I wish you would not be afraid to live out loud in high school and let people know that I serve God. For God I'll live and for God I'll die. I wish you would start being faithful now. Because sometimes by the time you get our age, it's too late. And I want to be real with y'all today, man. Oh, God, here is my prayer for you. I am praying today, because I'm real today. I am praying that you don't have to go through what we have gone through as adults. Come on, say amen, adults. I'm hoping you don't have to go through the hell we went through. See, nobody going to be real today. I hope you don't have to go through the addictions we went through. I hope you don't have to lie down in a bed with somebody and wake up with something that you cannot give back. See, nobody wants to be real today. Everybody's cringing up right now. Did he just say that? Yes! And the reason we leave our kids, oh God, to the wiles of the lion's den is because we tell them nothing. But I'm going to be honest with you today, young people. Listen, your parents are not perfect. Come on, say amen. All of them have made mistakes. And the only reason we have gathered you here today is to let you know we just don't want you to make the same mistakes that we have made. We want you to live for God now so that you don't have to fight in the dark to find God when you're 60 and 70 years old. Remember now, thy creator, in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Here is what the Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water. You want to be successful? Give your life to God. You want to marry the right one? Give your life to God. Come on, say amen, somebody. You want to be happy? Give your life to God. There is only one road. And it has to pass by Jesus. We don't hear anything from Daniel. He, he just believes, man, God is going to take care of me. Now watch this. I got to go. But um, it's funny because Daniel and the king of friends, 
And when, they, when, da when Daniel was put into the lion's den, the Bible says that the king goes back to the palace in his room and he kicks everybody out. He doesn't want entertainment that night. He does not want music that night. He cannot barely eat. He's in his own room, palace room, twiddling his thumbs. He's pacing back and forth because he is concerned about his friend Daniel. And here is what the Bible says. The Bible says early the next morning, uh, King Darius runs to the lion's den. He asked him to roll away the, sto the, the, the stone, and he leans into the pit, and he says, Daniel, Daniel, has your God delivered you? Now, here's the part where I shout. <laughs> I, I can read this whole text, and I can sit there for a little bit, but I cannot hold my peace when I get to verse 21, because here is what the Bible says. Again, Darius goes to the pit and says, Daniel, has your God delivered you? And the next words in the text are, Daniel answered. Y'all don't hear me today. We're talking about a lion's den. We're not talking about Mufasa and Sip. Come on, say amen, somebody. We're talking about a lion's den. He's supposed to be dead. Lions don't care about faithfulness. <laughs> Lions don't care about righteousness. They're designed to tear a man limb from limb. But the very next words in the text are, Daniel answered. And the word says, he says, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the lion's mouth. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done wrong before you, your majesty. Then the king was very glad and gave orders to Daniel to be lifted up out of the den. So Daniel was lifted up out of the den, and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he had trusted his God. Essentially what Daniel says is, O oh king, I'm still here. <laughs> Out of all the hell that I've been through, I'm still here. After all the problems that I've faced, I've, I'm still here. And see, I want you to understand, young people, that only people who surrender their whole life to God, when they go through hell, are able to make it on the other side. They're able to proclaim, I'm still here, and they don't even look like what they've been through. They're able to say, I'm still here because God has been good to me. I'm still here even though I made mistakes. I'm still here even though I messed up. I'm still here. Oh, Father, help me today. I want you to understand, your boy Daniel slept better in the lion's den than the king did in the palace. Come here, y'all. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. King doesn't know God for himself yet, but Daniel does. And in the middle of a storm, in the middle of a lion's den, in the middle of a pit, in the middle of a pinch, in the middle of a, of a situation that is beyond his control, your boy is able to lay his head on the pillow and thank God for another night and wake up in the morning with drool on his pillow and yawn with bad breath and just say, thank you, God, for another day. He's able to say, I'm still here. And these are the testimonies of people who first submit their lives to God. By the way, I'm done here. Come on. This is Jesus' testimony as well. Watch this. Jesus says to us today, I'm still here. What are you talking about, preacher? Listen to me. Does it not make you happy today that of all the dumb decisions that you've made, God still sticks with you? Come on, y'all, let's have a real moment here today. Does it not make you happy today that when God says right and you go left, God says, I haven't left you, I'm still here. Does it not make your heart leap today that God loves you so much that even though you did something stupid or something wrong that you knew was wrong, God still sticks by your side? Here's what God says to you. I'll always show up for you 
when you show up for me. In fact, God says, if you will give me your life today, I will make myself personally responsible for your success. God says, you give your life to me today. When you win, you win. And when, even when you lose, you win. <laughs> God says today, whatever the desires of your heart, whatever your dreams are, I can make it happen. If I can keep Daniel in a lion's den, I can certainly keep you. God says, I love you that much. God said, I will go to the ends of the earth and I will fight for you. I will stand in between you and trouble. I will take care of every need that you have. God says, hey, check this out. Here's what I want you to know. God says, I want you to know, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, make your requests be made known to God. I'm telling you today that I pray and wish that we all would dare to be like Daniel. To not be faithful in a moment, but to be faithful over the course of our lives. Listen, listen, listen. Stay here. We're done. Stay here. Stay here. I want somebody to hear me today. Um, man. God wants to know, can you be faithful when there is no praise team? Can you serve me when there is no music? Can you be faithful to me even when we're not pouring thousands of dollars to rent out this beautiful facility and have games and things like that? Can you serve me at school during a normal day? Can you be faithful to me in your relationship? Hallelujah. And, and even if he wants to go further than you're willing to go, you're willing to say no because you are fearfully and wonderfully made because you don't belong to him, you belong to me. God is saying, can you be faithful? Can you stand and proclaim through everything you might experience in this life, God, I'm still here for you. No matter what it is, no matter what I'm going through, I'm still here. Come on, check this out. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet today. If you're just saying, God, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Not for anybody else. Not for my own desires or for my own pleasure. I'm here for you. You've always showed up for me. I want to show up for you. God, I know I'm going to face some lions in this life. I know I'm going to end up in a pit at some point in my life. And I'm going to need you one day. So I'm making my calling and election sure now, today, right now. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, come on. I'm not, I didn't fly all the way here just to play games and, and preach a message today. There is somebody under the sound of my voice today. God knows you might have had plans tonight, but God is calling you to be faithful. God is asking you to give your life to him today, right now. You have seen God's move, God's hand move in your life. And see, what you don't know is, come on, don't look at me. You're praying right now. You're talking to God, asking what you need. What you see, you don't understand is that in your life right now, even though you don't see it, God is moving the chess pieces around on the chessboard of your life. God is setting you up. God has the job already prepared for you. And if you're faithful, it's yours. God has the house for you, the car for you the wife, the husband that you desire. God has it with your name on it. The question is, will you miss it? Because you don't have the character. You won't prioritize worship, and you're afraid to live your life out loud. Here's my appeal today. I don't want anybody to look at anybody else. This is for you. I don't want you to take no time. I don't want you to think about it today. But if you're saying, Pastor Coates, am I hear you? I want to live my whole life for God. Come on. I want you to push your way out the aisle. I want you to come down here right now. Let's make our calling and election sure. Let's pray to God today. Let's make it known to unfallen worlds. Let's make it known to the angels in heaven. Let's remind God. Let's make it clear. God, I am yours. Where are you today? Come on, don't look at nobody. Don't be afraid. See, this, this is what it is. I said this last night. If you can't live for God in here, how can you live for him out there? Make your move for him. Come on, don't look at nobody. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for being brave. God bless you. Where are you today? There's somebody today right now saying, God, I need you. <laughs> I'm not trying to mess up my life. I got family members that mess up their life. I got friends that messed up their life. I'm not trying to be like them. I want better. Where are you today? Come on. Come on, come on, we'll wait on you. Come on, come on, come on. 
Stop playing today. We come to church, we hear a message, we hear all this awesome music, and we make no decision for God. It's a shame before him. Why do you come? Why are you here? And don't tell me because your parents made you come. If you're here, you ought to get something and make some decision for God. Let's choose him today. God said, you choose me today, I'll choose you. You take one step towards me, I'll take two towards you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, make a move, make a move. Make a move, don't get tired on me yet, make a move. If you don't need to come, you're praying for somebody else right now. Come on, come on, come on. You're saying, God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. Some of you facing lions right now. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you, I need you, I need you. Huh. Some of you are in a relationship right now you don't even need. You know it's not what God would have for you, but you don't have the strength to break it off. Come on down here, let me pray for you today. Come on. Maybe somebody's dealing with depression, anxiety, loneliness. God can take care of all of that. God says, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Come on. I know we're taking a little extra time today, but I didn't come to play. There's no point. No point in preaching and not giving somebody an opportunity to make it real today. Yeah. I want you to make a decision today so that when you get my age and when you get older, you will remember this day for the rest of your life. When you gave your life to Christ. This ain't for me, this is for you. I've already decided. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Hallelujah. Come on. Come to Jesus. Come on. Come to Jesus. 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 God is able today to heal and deliver and secure your future. Come on. God says, I'm still here. Are you still here? I've been waiting on you. You go on to church Sabbath after Sabbath, but you've never made a decision. God says, I'm here. My hand is extended to you. Today is your day. You might not get another. Make your decision for God today. Hallelujah. you God come on we're gonna pray in a minute just 10 more seconds yeah yeah thank you God thank you for saving me thank you for saving my family thank you for pulling me out of some messes thank you God thank you for your power thank you Lord there's no way I should be a preacher today it is only by the grace of God thank you Lord come on come on come on come on Hallelujah. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. For somebody today, I don't know what your decision is. Maybe you need to recommit your life to Christ. Maybe you want Bible studies. Or maybe you want baptism today. Because some of you know you cannot leave this place and go back to your life because you won't make it without making your calling and election sure. We got a pool ready today. We will baptize you today. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Today we will put you in the water. And once you go down, the word of the Lord says that all of your sins will be erased as you come back up into the newness of life. Maybe that's your decision today. I don't know what it is, but that's for you and God to decide. I need to pray for you now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I don't know what you need, but you know what you need. Father, in the name of Jesus today, God, I'm just praying for my brothers and sisters under the sound of my voice right now. They have not come because of the message. They have come for you. And so I pray that you would do for them what you have done for me. I pray, oh God, that you would flood their heart with joy. I pray, oh Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them in clear ways so that they will understand, God, that you are their help. And beside you, there is none other. I pray, oh God, that you will go before them and secure their future. 
I pray, oh God, that you would go behind them and keep them from going back to what you have pulled them out of. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will keep them in the present. And Father, I pray that you will help us all to worship you in the way that you should be worshiped. And I pray, oh God, that we, when we enter into our old age, we'll still be able to say, God, as you were here for us, we're still here for you. We love you. We thank you and we praise you. Save us into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Let every believer say amen. Amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together for God today. For his love for you and what God has done. God bless you.